Good morning, Simon. Thanks for joining us today. We were, the two of us were yesterday attending a briefing by uh, the Department of uh, Transport with regards to retained EU law. And the objective of this uh, quick uh, meeting and discussion is to share uh, the, the message that was conveyed by the DFT. So before we do that, why don't I ask you to introduce yourself? Okay, well, thank you very much, uh, Annalise, and really appreciate the opportunity to be here and to be able to, to talk to your membership today. So my name is Simon Fippard. I'm an aviation lawyer at Bird & Bird in London. I've been following the aviation sector for my entire career and certainly the uncrewed aviation sector uh, extensively over the last eight or nine years. All right, thank you. So uh, it's good to know that we are having a conversation with someone who is in the know, so to say. Um, thank you. So we, att we attended that uh, meeting yesterday, that was the uh, 31st of May. The topic was retained EU law. And can you share with us and our members the, the core of the message conveyed by the DFT? Uh, of course. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, the message uh, recently following Brexit has been that the British government wished to do away with an awful lot of legislation that applies in this country, which was retained uh, as part of English law or UK law uh, following Brexit. And that actually includes almost the entirety of the technical and economic regulation that affects the aviation sector, including uncrewed aviation and drones. So until recently, the idea was that at the end of this year, all that regulation would fall away unless uh, the bill that's currently going through Parliament was uh, modified to keep some of that law ongoing, and it could have been kept until 2026. A couple of weeks ago, uh, the government announced that they were actually going to reverse that proposal. And instead of doing away with everything unless they kept it, uh, they were going to limit the changes to a specific schedule of defined uh, regulation. And that schedule has now been published. And as you say, the DFT were briefing uh, the industry on it yesterday. But I think the, the core message is that there is no uh, intention to un undertake a whole scale uh, modification of aviation law or drone law as it applies. So the existing uh, drone regulation environment uh, centered around the implementing regulation, the delegated regulation that is retained EU law, that will stay and there's no sign of it in the uh, in the schedule to the to the bill. So that environment that all your members have become used to over the last uh, few years, that is a regime which stays in place. All right, thank you. So it's clear. So for now, uh, unless there is a a, a change in in course of action, the 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 key message is to is that the uh, regulatory environment will remain as it stands. Uh, going forward, um, well, it, it won't. It won't be modified by this bill. But you will know. I'm sure you've been involved in the process that the Civil Aviation Authority is currently going through of reviewing the open and specific category regulation to see whether it's sort of fit for purpose and fit for the UK. So that is something that is going on anyway. But. Uh, you know, industry has its opportunity at the moment to have its say on on those aspects. Well, that's exactly what I was about to uh, discuss with you. <laughs> uh, actually, the, the bill we're, we're discussing is uh, about uh, retained EU law. Uh, but of course, uh, going forward, it doesn't mean that there won't be any reform. And as you mentioned, uh, the DFT and CA are reviewing regulation. So there will be changes and thank God there will be an evolution in the regulation. Uh, nothing can be static, especially in our environment. Uh, that may happen in 23, 24, but that will happen in due course. So you confirm that understanding as well. Yes, that's that's exactly right. And there are some aspects. So, for instance, the use space package of three regulations, which the EU has introduced, that was never part of 
retained EU law mm. because it didn't apply until after the magic date. The UK is looking at how it wants to tackle those sort of issues, and that no doubt will be coming along uh, in due course. All right, very good. Well, it's clear. Thank you very much, Simon, uh, for this uh, discussion. Um, members, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to us at regulation at arpas.uk. But otherwise, thank you very much for Simon for this briefing. It is, I'm sure, very helpful for all our members. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Pleasure to contribute.